Right, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. Um, so this one is going to be a fun one. I decided it would be quite interesting to buy free mystery boxes on, I bought them all on Etsy. Um, they are cuttings, rooted and unrooted cuttings. And I bought from three separate sellers. I'll leave the seller's information in the um, description so that you can check it out if you are interested or if you liked what I got in mind. Um, I've already opened them. This is like after the video is all finished. So um, I hope you guys enjoy and I just thought it'd be quite interesting, quite fun to do this. So um, again, or firstly, I'll say thank you to all the sellers if you are watching this somehow. So I'm going to obviously open one at a time. They all did come at different times, so they are all filmed on different occasions. So um, it was good fun to open them and I'll get on with the video now and let you guys see what I got. Right, so the first um, package has arrived of the mystery boxes. So um, as I would have previously said, I purchased three, and that's my address. <laughs> and the first one has just come, so I'm just going to take off my address quickly so that um, I can show you the package. And this is the one. This is the same. The one from the same seller that I bought the other cuttings from in my most recent video. So it's come in the same um, cardboard box. Um, perfectly, it came really quick because I only I only bought these. Not last night, the night before, yeah. And it's already come, so that's really good. Um, it said, the description for this was very minimal. It just said, um, you'll receive up to six cuttings. I think that's all it said. But it was like a brand new listing because I checked out his shop previously, as you would have known. Um, and this wasn't on there, the mystery box wasn't on there. So I thought I'd just try it out. And as I'm doing other mystery boxes within the same video, I thought it'd be quite cool. Um, I'm gonna open it like this, just here, rather than down anywhere because I just don't have anywhere that's particularly ideal situation. Right, okay. Right, so I'm not gonna, some of these I may not know the names of. I will change the camera angle actually because I feel like it's just a little bit, gonna be a bit difficult. Right, so this is like a super, super weird angle, but it's gonna have to do. Um, right, so straight away, I think I can see so I'm trying to scan here, a cutting of, oh, there's a, yeah, cool, okay. Right, um, we have a Sansferia here. This is Sansferia trifasciata variegata, um, or trifasciata, some people say. Um, I don't think it's rooted at all. Oh, okay, so it's going to be that way up. That's cool. Um, I do already have one of those, but that's going to be cool to propagate. And next up here, this looks like we have a miniature, or um, is it a parlor palm, potentially? I don't actually, I've never actually grown one of these myself, um, but that's really cool. It looks like it's rooted, so it may be potentially a little division. And that's actually quite cool, because I've never actually owned one of those. So that's really cool. And then um, we have, I'm glad, I'm glad I got one of these, um, because this is from the same seller, and um, I recently bought the um, string of dolphins and this one looks like it's actually a rooted cutting of string of dolphins. So that's really cool. I'll be able to add that to the pot of the cuttings, dolphins, dolphins, dolphins. Um, there are a couple of dead ones. I'll cut those off. Let's get them off. So that's really cool. Um, it'll help me get a thicker, like a established plant quicker, which is really good. And then here we have a type of Tradescantia. This just looks like a green variety. Um, I don't know the cultivar name. Um, there weren't no cultivar names on the listing, but that's really cool. I'm really, <clears throat> I have in the past actually struggled keeping Tradescantia alive. I don't know why, but I just did. Um, with these new plants, I am definitely going to be quarantining them or checking them over really closely for any pests uh, because I don't want to risk getting any kind of pest. Uh, and then we have here a string of... This looks to me like a string of tears cutting, but if you know better, potentially it's a string of pearls. Um, I'm just going on the shape. I'm just going on the shape of the actual leaves, <laughs> the little pseudo leaves. Um, so again, like I did with the string of um, dolphins before, 
I'll cut this in half and try to route two separate cuttings. So that's quite cool. Nice little cut in there. And then the last thing here, oops, is an Echeveria leaf. Um, quite healthy, not, not squishy or anything, so that's pretty cool. Um, I don't often keep Echeverias. I think I only have like two in my collection. I think I've only got two. Yeah, I think I only have two. Um, so I'll try and root that and that will be cool. So that makes, um, that makes up the entire mystery box. Right, so I got six cuttings in total, which is really good. That's what the listing said you'd get, where it said up to six, up to six. So that's really good. I'm most excited about the string of pearls slash beads or slash tears, um, and definitely, and the string of dolphins cutting because this is a rooted cutting and I'm gonna add that to my already um, rooting uh, string of dolphins pot to make a fuller plant. So that's really cool and it's quite a nice size and the and the actual leaves are nice and like f quite thick so that's really good. Uh, nice and healthy and then my little palm which is adorable and it's strange I've never had one of these before but that's really good so I've got a couple of new plants here. And then the Sansevieria cutting, I'll definitely root it. I have, I do have one of these Sansevierias. Um, as you guys may know, it's quite large now. It's got a couple of dead, like, dying leaves on it. I'll just grab it quickly. Right, so this is my um, Sansevieria trifasciata variegata. Um, I know there's two names. There's the trifasciata or trifasciata. And then there's the other one, which one of them is a shorter growing one and one of them's a taller growing one. And by the looks of it, I've got the shorter one. So whichever name that is, that's what this one is. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you can see it's the same as this one. So that's really cool. I'll definitely try and root it. Um, the only thing with variegated cuttings, if you guys are buying cuttings of harder to find or variegated Sansevierias, um, do your research because they do revert. So it um, the pups from this won't come up variegated. I'm fine with that because I don't have the unvariegated version. So that's really good. I'm going to grow that. Yeah, I don't actually have the unvariegated version. I did have a Sansevieria trifasciata. Um, Zeylanica, since, yeah, um, and I actually got rid of it. I got rid of it in the summer. Um, I took it outside and I just ended up forgetting about it and letting it die. Um, so that's cool. I'll grow that and it'll grow up the regular green green variety. But just heads up for everyone that's out there trying to buy um, expensive Sansevieria cuttings. Do your research because they do revert the majority of the time. So it'll be interesting to see. So like if you're buying a Silver Flame or whatever varieties are there. There's the, I saw a gold, was it a golden flame or like something like that? And it had, it was the same, it was a more of a bird's nest fern, but taller. <laughs> and it had, it was variegated. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but it's quite, quite an expensive one. And it'd be interesting to see if that reverts as well. Um, but yeah, definitely do research if you're buying those or if you're spending any considerable money on them. So I've just checked and I actually only paid £4 for that parcel um, and then £1.50 postage. So that's a really good price for all of those, considering if you just buy a string of dolphins cutting or a string of pearls cutting or string of um, tears, you're going to be paying about £4 or £3 plus postage for them alone. So that's really good. And I am actually quite excited about this Tridescantia because I really like Tridescantias. I've just never been able to keep one alive. Who knows why? Not me. Um, but no, it's really pretty. And I'd, I actually really want to try and get the the really hairy Sansevieria. I don't, um, no. Tridescantia. Um, I don't know the name of it. I can't remember off the top of my head. But I was researching about it the other night and it was really pretty. And I would like to try and get a cutting of that as well. Um, but overall, that was a really good price for this box. Um, I'll leave the... I'll leave the names of the Etsy sellers in the description so you guys can check them out if you want to. Um, but that makes that's the first one, and I'm impressed. It's good for the price. Good for the price. There's a nice range of plants, um, relatively common house plants, I'd say. But I don't have. I mean, five of them I didn't have, apart from cuttings I bought recently. But right, so these are the two that I got the other day. This is my string of pearls and this is my string of dolphins. These are, this is a cutting and this is rooted. 
Um, so I'm gonna add, where are we? I was going to add this to this pot because I literally only put these in here the other day, so they wouldn't have done anything just yet. I know it's not really good to disturb them, but I'm gonna. <laughs> so if you got a problem, I'm joking. <laughs> um, I'm gonna disturb them just for the, because it's easier. Um, and I haven't yet put them in my propagator because I literally just got them yesterday. Um, not that that's a reason to, I've just, basically laziness. <laughs> But let's get this open and we'll see what the roots are like on here. <clears throat> and then I'll put it in my propagator. So my propagator at the moment is actually just not really... It's, well, it hasn't been on for a while, so it's not heated. Uh, but it does keep it a bit more humid in there. Um, which I know these don't necessarily need, but the cut the, cu the cuttings will need it for when they're rooting. Um, let's have a butcher's. How well are we rooted? Oh, nice. Yeah, we're pretty well rooted. Cool. Oh, okay. There's two cuttings in here. Oh, so there's one cut, one unrooted and one rooted. Wicked. So that's a good size. And look how cute that one is. You see that? <laughs> it looks like a frog. Doesn't that look like a frog? <laughs> right. So I'm just going to make a big hole in the center, place it in there, and then just like that gently just gently pour, pour um and then i'm going to place these back in here and i probably am going to give it a very slight water um let's get that in nicely and that one and then these will go into the propagation box um with this okay what do i what do i do here i'm gonna cut that there two cuttings this may um that one feels a bit softer so i feel like they're more like fresh growth and then that one i'll stick in there so that's a pretty decent pot of cuttings um i'm gonna spray them down put them in the propagator and fingers crossed they will grow nicely then with the string oh, you see here so i've got the string of pearls here which are lovely and plump and then i have these which i'm gonna guess they're a, str a different string so they're gonna be a string of tears potentially unless they it was sticky unless they are just young string of pearls um like i said i'm not 100 certain so i'm gonna cut that there and cut that little <laughs> that little sorry dog guy cut that off stick that in there Just like so. Um, and then with this one, I'm going to cut off that. Or can I pull it? Yeah. Well, they're a little bit soft. I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, no, they may be just a little bit dry. And then pop that in there. Just like that. And then I'm going to... Uh, this one's actually a little bit moist already because I did water that yesterday. That one needs watering. And then those two are going to go in the propagator. Right, next up. So for this, I'm just using my multi-purpose compost mix. Um, this, there we go. Yeah, so it's just, um, this is just, what is it? Hello? Multi-purpose compost, vermiculite, a little bit of um, frass, and some, a little bit of cocoa fiber, just what's left over. Right, let's do my little pile apart next. So this little guy is really cute and i'm hoping that it's got some good roots on it because i don't um i don't know how well it would do if it didn't have roots let's try and get this out gently nice i don't know how wet these need to be kept like i literally have never kept them before oh nice it's got some good little roots there we go that's really cute look at that so cool i'll just Get a relatively deep hole in there. And then plant it just like so. There we go. Perfect. So that um, the, the soil is a little bit moist anyway, but I'll give it a little, very little water before I put it somewhere. Right. With this um, echeveria cutting, I'm just going to, I think it's an echeveria. Yeah, I think so. Um, I'm just going to place that 
on a little on a bit of soil so um with some of my other cuttings i'm not gonna give that a specific or oh, a specific pot right um next up we're gonna do the tradescantia right so this tradescantia is really pretty i'm actually really happy with that and it's very simple it's just very plain green but it's a really nice green and tradescantias grow really quickly when they're kept right and um so far i've never kept them right um can that just come off no right these are secured really nicely so he's put um tissue paper around the roots and then wrapped it in bubble wrap and sellotaped it on so it's nice and secure so the packaging on these are really really good i'm happy with the packaging let's try and i didn't find my knife as you guys can see <laughs> oh these are sharp. I don't know what they're playing at. Come on, guys. There we go. I'm assuming this is rooted. Yeah, it will be. Oh, <laughs> nice. Stabbed. Um. Oh, yeah, it's got some nice little young roots on it. So very, very um, fresh roots. So I'll remember to try and keep this quite moist. Don't want to let it dry out too much because the roots haven't established. There we go, just gently firm down. And then I'll keep these in the propagator. So um, with the, I don't think this is going to fit. Oh, it does, perfect, I'm going to do that. I think this, yeah, it's not rooted, it's just a fresh cut. So, um, yeah, remember which way is bottom. Bottom, bottom, right, let me put it up that way and then I'll know which way. So I'm gonna do the same again. These, um, right, I'm gonna keep this relatively dry, but they don't like to be in a dry, well, as a cutting, I don't wanna keep it in a dry environment. I wanna keep the humidity high so the leaf doesn't dry it too quickly, but you don't wanna keep the medium too wet because they'll rot off. So like literally just stick that down in there, they're hard as nails. And these take a very, very, very long time to grow from cuttings. But that's perfect, that'll do just fine. And um, ordinarily I'd put the date on these, but as I'm doing a video, I'm gonna be able to use that to check what date they were taken as, or taken at. Right, so there they all potted up. There they are all potted up. <laughs> Good, my English is getting worse. Um, and then obviously the little I'm gonna put somewhere else, but that, mystery box has been really good i know obviously this here was from a different box but from the same guy uh or girl same person same seller um so i'm pretty happy let's move him a bit closer so you can see Oops. Do you swap over? so i'm happy with that literally the the mystery box was four pounds for six cuttings and one pound fifty postage so five pound fifty i'm <laughs> i think pretty well spent um yeah really good and i'm, I'm excited about those and those and, and this, that are what I'm most excited about, these three. Um, this, if it grows, I may uh, gift this to someone else because I don't have an interest in keeping one for myself. But that's the fun of mystery boxes is that you can keep a couple for yourself and then you can give them as gifts to your friends or stuff. So this um, mystery box, I'll give this definitely a five out of five star rating, Jerry rating, <laughs> that don't exist. Um, no, but that's really good, I'm happy with that. So. I will come back to you guys when I have the next one. Right, so it is, I think, two days later and my next parcel has come. Um, this one is from, let me check the seller name. So I think this is the one that is from Equinox. I'll leave the seller names on screen and in the description. Um, and I actually spoke to her briefly. Uh, her? They were really lovely. So I'm going to get into this box and it's a little bit bigger than the last one. So. That's exciting. Also, I'll put the price on screen here. I don't remember how much this was. I think this was the more expensive one. Let me check. Right, so this one was only six pounds and free postage, I believe. So let's get into it. One of them had, I don't know if it was this one or not, because I can't remember, but one of them had a list of all of the plants that might come in that parcel, um, that might come in that mystery box. And I think this, I think from memory, this was the one I was most excited about. So uh, it's got really nice, like, personalized stickers on there and there's a little um yeah it's like an etsy logo stamp so that's really cute 
So, and then there's my name on the back that's like in really, really tiny writing and it's really cute. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to change the camera angle and start opening this package. Again, I don't know if they'll be rooted or not. I think they are just cutting, so I don't think any of them will be rooted, but that's why I've got a propagator. So let's go. Right, so I think that angle is okay. Let's try and get this light brighter. Is that better? Maybe. Right. Um, oh, how many cuttings is going to be in here? I don't even know. Let me check. Right, so um, there should only be two in here. There's only two cuttings. So it's quite a big box for just two cuttings. Um, I don't know, because obviously I've got this one and then another one coming, and it doesn't say who it's from on the outside. I think this is the Equinox one, Equinox one, but it may be a different one. <laughs> so, but we're going to find out. Um, so let's get into this. Because one of them had, on the listing, they had like the possibility to get Hoyas and stuff, and philodendrons, and I don't know if that's this one or not, let me get into it. Oh, I found my knife, by the way. It was um, in my drawer where I always put it. <laughs> I just couldn't find it the other day. Right, so hopefully they are wrapped individually, so only so that I don't see it all at once, but I mean, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Alright, let's go. Oh, that's really great. Oh, it is Equinox. Yeah, cool. Oh, that's so nice. Look at that. That's really sweet. Oh, my camera is filming at the wrong angle. Right, so I just realised that my camera was the wrong way around. Um, but that's really nice. So there's the um, the seller there. And it was Alice, because I said her. And I wasn't sure why I said her. But yeah, it's because I spoke to a woman called Alice. <laughs> right. Let's open... Oh! <gasps> What is this? Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so far, this looks like she must have spent a lot of time packing this. Right. So we've got that same sticker again. Let's open this. Oh, and they've got labels. Ah, there's a little... That's really cute. So um, the seller actually makes a lot of... Um, what's it called? Um, the seller makes a lot of like macrame stuff and like ornaments and um like plant accessories and stuff so that's really cute it's a nice little keyring and it's in the lovely turquoise blue which is literally my favorite color so that is lovely thank you so much for that right oh 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 okay <laughs> ooh. i see that they're both philodendrons right um ready to put up in soil wicked oh nice this is so cool right there is what's this oh nice a little um God, she's really good with all the information. So this is just um, water propagation, how to look after them, or sphagnum propagation. I definitely would recommend uh, sphagnum propagation more because it builds a better root system. Wicked. Right, so this one here has a label on it saying ready to pot, ready to pot up. So let's go. Philodendron Brazil, did I say? Let's try and open this up. That tape is really nice as well, isn't that? Wow. Right. Yeah, so the, I, I believe this was only six quid. I'm pretty sure. Ooh. Oh, that's a really nice leaf. Okay, so I don't actually have a philodendron in Brazil. Um, you can see the... I don't know how well it's showing. Yeah, the green variegation it might look better without my hand behind it, actually. That is really pretty. I'm going to open this up just to have a look at the root system. So this one looks like it's been... Yeah, it has been uh, propagated in sphagnum moss. So let's get this open. Wow. That sphagnum moth has been under a lot of light, it looks like. It's really pink. It looks really pretty when it goes up colour. Um, let's try not to mess around with it too much. Nice. Yeah, yeah, so it's really well rooted. And we have... Yeah, there we go. We've got some roots there and there's a node, so it's going to grow from there. I'm not going to play around with that too much. Let's wrap it back up. That's really cool. I, it's actually surprising that I don't have one of these, but I literally don't have one. And I've never had one before, so that's really nice. Let's move that to one side quickly. Right, so... Um, oh, cool. Philodendron and Silver Sword. Wicked. So these are both actually really good sizes as well. And I don't have a person... I don't personally own a Philodendron and Silver Sword, so that is also really good. Uh, let's try and get... So I don't know if this one's rooted or not, because 
doesn't have the label on like the last one did. Let's try and cut this. Oh, that's really pretty. I love the colour of the Philodendron Silver Sword. And I like that it's not too big because I think the thing I, I think the reason I haven't got myself a Philodendron Silver Sword is because the when the leaves get large they they're quite hard to well I've got a small room so it's quite difficult to kind of find a place for them but let's open this up and have a look I can't I think it's already rooted or is it not I can't really tell I don't oh yeah yeah there's some little roots there and there's a node like the node part at the top yeah so it'll grow from in between here so where the node is that's really cool. I don't, I'm not going to pull any of that sphagnum moss away. So I'm going to propagate these as they are. I'm going to propagate them in sphagnum moss. Um, I'll put up the philodendron um, Brazil into a pot, like it says. I'll put it straight up into a pot and I'll use some, I think I might use some sphagnum moss in the mix. Actually, no, I've got some soil up here that's got a lot of perlite in it. That'll be fine. And then I'll include the sphagnum moss that's already like here attached to the pot that is really cute i love that keychain i'm gonna use that i might stick it on my bag or something on my backpack that'd be quite cool right so this is really good yeah so this is equinox and it was two cuttings for six quid um which is a really good price philodendron silver sword is a brilliant price for that and then we've got the philodendron brazil so it's really cool to get two philodendrons and it's cool to get two that i don't actually have in my personal collection so that's really good right so i'm going to be using these nine centimeter um recyclable pots that i've got um and which one are we going to do first which one did it say is ready to pop the brazil so i'm gonna just use my regular mix which as you guys would have seen before it's just a mixture of everything um and then i'm gonna leave the the sphagnum moss around cutting oh it's got some really good roots so its roots come all the way down so I'm going to try and get those roots down quite deep and I'm gonna leave the sphagnum moss around it just actually let's not do it like that right I'm gonna half empty it that'd be easier I'm gonna get that about there and then backfill I just have to do a bit slower. So I'm going to keep that um, the node actually to the surface. I don't want to bury the node. There we go. And I'm going to keep this for a, for a little bit. I'll keep it more on the damp side, so I won't let it dry up too much in between watering. But until it's really stabilised. I don't want to let it dry out too much. I want to let its root system really develop quite a lot before I let it dry out in between watering. Is that going to stay? Right, there we go. That's really cute. I love that. I love I love the, um, the variegation on the Brazil because you get the lime green, the dark green, and then you get some yellow. So that's really cute. I like that. Right, so this one is going to be going in quarantine with the other plants, just to make sure there's obviously no risk of spreading any pests. Um, and then... Right, the philodendron... Right, with the silver sword, I am going to put it up into compost. I'm going to leave this sphagnum moss around the base, and then I'm going to keep it inside my propagator, so I'll keep it more on the damper side, and wait for it to root within the propagator so that it doesn't dry out because if i put it up in this and keep it outside like out in my room it has like a risk of drying up too quick and then not rooting before it like dries out so i think if i keep it inside the propagator then i think we should be all good right so i'm gonna make a big divot in the center and i'm gonna keep all that sphagnum moss around the base there we go make sure it's up the right way and i'm gonna keep like that and then sprinkle a little bit more soil around the top just to like fill in all those holes
perfect. So you can see the node is um, on show, so it's like not buried. So that should root nicely in there and come up. I don't know how quickly these grow. I don't think they grow massively slow, but I mean, I'm definitely going to find out. <laughs> That's so pretty, that leaf. It reminds me of the the bluey tone of the um, skin depths as Pictus. I really like that. Right, so I'll just quickly show you the propagations. So we've got the Philodendron and Silver Sword, or Philodendron Hastatum, which is the Latin. Silver Sword is just the common name, but that is really pretty. And that is, like I said, four times it's going to go into my propagator. And then I have my Philodendron Brazil, which I won't put into the propagator because its root system was already, already relatively established. And that's such a big leaf. So it's really pretty. So that was a pretty good price. I paid six pounds and it was free postage. Um, I'll double check that, but I'm pretty sure that's what I paid. And yeah, so three pound of cutting and free postage. That's, you can't complain with that. And thank you so much, Alice, for my little key ring. I'll be able to, I'll definitely put that on my backpack. That'd be quite nice. So thank you for that. Um, definitely go check out her Etsy shop. I believe she has, yeah, she sells like macrame. And I think she does, I, I think she sells some plant cuttings. And obviously you can get the plant cutting mystery box. So that's really good. I love that. And it's actually worked out quite interesting because the first cutting box I opened in this video was the cheaper one. Then this was the middle price, the middle price one. And then the last one to come is the more expensive one. Like it is only £1.70 more expensive or £1.50 more expensive, which is like not much. But um, yeah, it's funny that they've turned up in order of price. So that I'm really happy with that. And I'm glad that they are rooted or one of them's rooted and one of them's starting to root. So that just makes it a lot easier and they'll hopefully get established quicker. Um, yeah, I think, I think I'm looking forward to the Brazil growing because I've never had one. So um, I do, I've obviously had, um, I've had philodendron hastatums because I sell them on my shop, but I don't have a personal one. So I, ne I can now keep that one for me personally, which is really good. Um, yeah, so thank you so much, Alice. And I will be back when the last parcel turns up. Right, so my last mystery parcel has arrived. And this one is from the puppy store. Um, I'm going to assume, <laughs> it's definitely plants, no puppy accessories in here. Um, so I'm gonna open this up. I think there's only, actually, I don't know how many. I think there's only two kinds in here, but I don't know, I may be wrong. Where's my knife? Right, so this, yeah, this was the more expensive one, seven pound 60. Um, and I'm not gonna show you the front because it's still got my address on it, but uh, sent second class. Um, I'm gonna get straight into it because I really don't know what to say because it's been, a, it's been like a week now since I ordered these. So I really don't know what to, um, what to expect or I don't remember really much about the listings. Right, okay, so let's get this open. I'm gonna do this one relatively quickly. Oh, this is very small. Okay, so wicked. Ah, oh, oh. I think this was the one that is coming to me now because um, the little stickers are little like succulents. And I'm pretty sure this was the one that it was like named something for crazy and weird people. So I was like, yes, that's me. I'm going to get that. Um, but then I think it said that it had six um, cuttings. So I'm thinking, yeah, I think there are about six in there. I don't know. I can see through the paper. Um, so this is going to be more succulents. Right. Where, do, where, where shall I open this? Uh... Right. There we go, that's a better camera angle. So um, this one, yeah, it's gonna be, I remember the reason I purchased this one was because there were some uncommon, um, uh, like uncommon succulents, I'll say, because I don't know the Latin names for every variety there were. There was like some etch barriers and um, gra grapto sedums, I believe was the name, I don't know. Right, let's get into this. So, so far it's like really, small i'm hoping i don't i i think it said that you can get rooted or unrooted um i'm going to assume that they're probably all unrooted but let's not think too much let's just open it up 
I don't want to look at all of them at once, but I think we have no choice. Oh, okay, cool, right. Oh, we've got, like, a Chrysula Golem. Um, that is very floppy. That's probably not very good. Um, oh, then we've got some watches. Uh, watches chains, which I think is a type of Chrysula. Yes, it is a type of Chrysula. So there's some of that. Then we have... Oh, okay, this is the Grapto... Grapto Sedum, I think it's called. the Or the... Uh, Moonstone, I think, it looks like, which is cool. I did have a massive one of those. I did actually recently get rid of it, and I kept some cuttings. Uh, okay, right, now, oh, this one here is a Firestorm Sedum, it looks like. Um, they're all a bit dry, which, I mean, isn't... Uh, that looks like a whole wolfy... No, yeah, no, Etcheveria, sorry. Ooh, that looks like an Etcheveria, um... I don't know what variety. That's the only problem with this is obviously we're gonna have no variety names. Um, what's that? That's definitely another type. Of, uh, no, that's a probably that's probably a one of these. So it looks like we've got two firestorm sedums. Yeah, is there two of each? There's two of these. Oh, that's quite pretty. That looks again like the very similar to the moonstone. That's really pretty. I like that one. Um. <laughs> now now the rest is anybody's guess uh this one is intriguing me because it's like quite dark <laughs> this is such a strange unboxing um not not a clue what it is if you guys know from that single leaf let me know but i quite like that and it looks very healthy it looks like um it's not but it looks like the i've seen it on laura's video where she calls it like a pork and beans or something i know it's not that because it's pointed but it reminds me of that sort of color so that's very interesting. Um, I'm actually also really intrigued by this one, even though it's like so tiny. So we've got this little guy here. I don't really know how I can show you this. Is it gonna focus? No, it's not. Um, I don't know what it is. It's just a tiny, tiny little leaf. <laughs> okay, so we'll plop that down there. Uh, can I recognize any of these? This one, that's no good. That is, look, that's rotten. That is not good. Um, that would have been pretty though, because it's look how hairy that is. Oh, you can see how dirty my nails are. I do apologize. I've been in the garden today, finally wrapped up my ba uh, bananas, and I've cut back all of my herbaceous perennials, finally, like about a month too late, but I've done it. <laughs> um, that's a shame about this one, because that is really interesting. It's so hairy and silver. So that's a shame. Um, this one, I don't know what that is. It looks like a mixture between this guy and this guy. Um, yep, there's that one. <laughs> and then we've got a couple more. These look like Echeverias. These, oh, this one's, wait, let me put that down. This one's slightly hairy, I think. Can you see that? Very, very slightly. My nails look nasty. Um, yeah, slightly hairy, so that one's quite cute. And then this one's cute, it's got a little point on it. Um, Definitely one of the weirder videos, uh, one of the weirder what's that? Um, mystery boxes, but I guess it said it's for weird and crazy people, so I guess they ain't lying. Um, the only thing is, this one's no good, this one is probably also no good, it's just too... I'll definitely try it, but I mean, I've got one of these anyway, so I'm not too worried. Also, with the watches chains, the Chrysula, I don't know the Latin name for that one, other than Chrysula. I did actually just purchase myself a new one the other day, which is here, which looks absolutely gorgeous. I, f I don't know why I like it so much. I think it just reminds me of like an indoor conifer and it was only £1.50. So, but uh, I just thought I'd show you that quickly. But I love that so much. And then uh, my old, because my old one I planted up into, sorry, this is going on off on a tangent, but my old one I planted up into a um, arrangement, I guess you could call it. And it has just gone all bad, gone all nasty. And then I took propagations off of that old one, and they are here. Um, these propagations are rooted. These have been in here for maybe three months. So, yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll plant them. Maybe I can pot them in there with those ones, and that'll, that'll mean they won't take up any more space. Um, overall, I'm excited about this little guy. Let me pop all the ones on my hand that I'm excited about. That little bean. <laughs> um, definitely these two, because I love the colour. 
And then, which other one did I say I was excited? Oh, that little tiny, tiny, tiny thing. This one. Because it just looks adorable. Um, the rest, I've got Firestorm Sedums. I can show you them now, actually, because they are within arm's reach. Um, let me just pop those down. So this here is my Firestorm Sedum. This one was sent to me from Holly. Um, oh, the pot is getting a little bit mouldy. Um, this one was sent to me from Holly as some leaf cuttings. Well, they were cuttings, but they had started sprouting already. And it's just grown so nicely. It's really done really well. I've got this under my propagator at the moment. Um, under my, sorry, my under my grow light. And it's doing really well um, when it gets a bit more summery when it gets, when we get into spring i'm going to put it back out onto this table here because it gets a lot of direct light and it really brings out the the dark coloration on it um so there's that guy I'll pop that there and what else yeah okay I'd, I'd say overall there's a nice selection i'm happy about the selection and i'm excited about these these couple here it's a shame about this these two because they probably aren't viable um i mean this one i'll try it but i've got one of these oh grab that as well <laughs> so this is my um chrysula golem um this i actually got in a mystery box as well Ugh, what was that like over a year ago yeah it's got to be over a year ago um and it's grown so much and it's so pretty i really really like it so um yeah, it's just so nice. Really love that. I need to water it actually, so I'll keep that out. Um, so overall, like, it's quite a nice selection. Like, I don't know, I'm not overly excited about these two. <laughs> but yeah, that's cool. I'm excited about these ones. And the rest of them, I just don't know what they are. So um, we'll definitely wait and see. Actually, I'm going to pot you with these ones. These are the, these are the liked ones. These are the miscellaneous uncertain um so i'll propagate all of them i'll definitely grow them and th for the so, i mean it's a good diverse selection and this was the most expensive one so i don't know what i was expecting but right so i hope you guys enjoyed that um montage of mystery cuttings boxes um it was definitely an interesting experience there's a flower's about to bat it but it flew away <laughs> Yeah, so it's definitely an interesting experience and I do love mystery boxes. I might get a mystery plant box next rather than cuttings, but I am um, overall really happy with the Equinox one and I'm really happy with the, I think it was called All Plants for Life, the first one. Um, the last one is not really my cup of tea because I'm not really into succulents that much, but it was a good diverse range and I'm excited to see them grow and they're going to take such a long time to grow, so maybe that's partly why I'm not that excited about it as well. But I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that, and um, I don't know why people don't buy more mystery boxes. I love mystery boxes off of Etsy, like, I just really enjoy that sort of thing. But um, let me know what you guys thought about this video. I still need to clear up that mess. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more. And if you have any ideas, or if you're in the UK actually, and you know places that do good mystery boxes, please let me know, because I'm always looking for mystery boxes. I can't find them anywhere. Um, so yeah. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.